after you've found your site where you're going to set the camper up, first thing to do is put the stabiliser legs down, ensure that the trailer is sitting as square as possible. Boys are using the stabiliser legs here to um, get the trailer into position and make sure it's firm. Once this is done, they will unhook the tournay cover, the zip and velcro. Completely remove the tournay cover, position it somewhere safe. After the tornado cover is removed and the tent is completely exposed, the boys will now proceed to fold the uh, tent out. It's done in two easy movements. The floor is folded over first. On this particular trailer, the bows are pulled up and over. Very simple process. By having the door open, uh, the air can get into the tent and go up easily. Lee is now placing the peg into the tent under the trailer. He will ensure that this is perpendicular and square to the trailer. By doing this, it will make the rest of the tent fall into place. Make sure the floor is pulled out square to the trailer. There are no creases running across the floor. This, is, this will ensure that the rest of the tent will sit square when it's set up. We're just putting the four pegs in to hold it down. Lee will now step into the uh, tent as well as Ben. The first thing Ben is, will do is remove the pole from the holder and put it down into the sock on the floor. Then he'll adjust the bow out. On the other side we have Lee and we'll adjust the uh, tent bows in, uh, to the upward position. When you push these bows up ensure that you do not push the canvas so far that you're going to stretch it. We'll only open up the stitching and cause it to leak. Fit the number one spreader bars into the peak positions on the uh, side of the trailer. They'll do this before they hook up the awnings. Sometimes when you go to put these hooks into the main bows, it may be necessary to get someone on the inside as well, just to align the holes. What Lee's done here, he's pulled the awning over, or Ben's putting that last one into position. They will now zip the awning on. When you're feeding the zip on, try not to force it. It should go quite easily. If you're forcing it, look for obstructions like sand in the zip or uh, anything else that's bent the zip over. Okay, with the spreader bars now in position and the awning zipped on, they'll pull the weather strip over the top and seal it down onto the Velcro. I'll now grab the centre bar, the centre pole, which is a number four pole. And Lee will position this in the middle with the spreader bar and pull the awning over the top first. The easiest way to erect the awning is to put the centre bar and spreader bar into position first. Position the canvas onto the top of. And it will hold the rest of the awning into position. Lee's now positioned the number four pole and Ben has the two spreader bars to the outside. After these are in position the canvas is pulled over, the spigot of the pole is placed through the hole in the awning and while it's in this position down Lee will tension the spreader bar underneath and at this particular time the whole awning will stand there unaided which allows you to then go and get the corner poles and do one corner at a time by yourself. As the boys will now demonstrate. Put the spreader bar on top first as Lee is doing here. 
Then you go to the spreader bar we've already put onto the number four centre pole. The poles in the outside corner are number twos. As Lee's done here, the two spreader bars are now over the spigot and the canvas is pulled on. Pull the little rubber bungee cord down into the hole provided into the pole. This will hold the canvas down even though there's a bit of a breeze and now it leaves you free to walk around and adjust the spreader bars to get tension onto the canvas. I reiterate again, never try and overstretch the canvas with the spreader bars, it will only lead to problems later on and leak, leakage. If you have done the uh, proper thing and the campsite is set up square, the awning should sit perpendicular and parallel to the rest of the camper, basically as this one's doing right now. We're on a slight uh, uneven site here, but the boys have done a good job getting the whole tent up square. Final reposition of the poles to make sure they're vertical. The boys will now go off and find the walls to uh, proceed putting the rest of the annex up. The boys are now going off to get the floor and um, we're going to fit the floor down. It's a lot easier to do the floor when the walls aren't in position. It lets you make sure the floor's sitting square. Also when fitting the uh, walls it gives you something to lean on if the ground's a bit damp. What Lee's doing here is uh, align the velcro onto the side of the tent. The boys are now just pulling the floor out. I'll set the pole on. If there's a bit of a breeze around you may need something just to hold it down before you get the walls on. It lets the whole floor sit out nice and square. From here on in it makes the fitting of the walls a lot easier. Lee's just going along and uh, making sure the velcro is correct. Next procedure is to uh, fit the walls to the annex area. This is best done in one piece, makes life a lot easier in the end. Uh, if you start at the corner nearest the tent itself and work your way back around, everything should fall into position quite easily. The Velcro makes it an extremely easy setup. When you get to the corner, if you unhook the little bungee loop, pick the bottom of the pole up and push it in. It will let you get the Velcro to come around the corner a lot easier. As Lee is demonstrating now. Now as he comes around the corner, he'll fold the Velcro back down onto it. Now the easiest way to get the walls on the Velcro around is to pull the pole back in on a bit of an angle. It allows you access to the Velcro around the back of the pole. And after you have come around the corner, then you push the pole back into position. Continue the Velcro, the walls right around. Lee will demonstrate with the pole again, just pull it back in, feed the Velcro back under it, around the corner, and continue across to the trailer. The whole process for putting the rear wall on should only take about three minutes. Easily accomplished by somebody by themselves. Boys will now open up the door, come back out, put a bit of light in on the subject. Go around and square the walls up to the, the floor that's already down in position. And then we'll Velcro the floor back up to the walls on the inside. Pretty basic setup for the annex. After you're satisfied the floor has been pulled out as square as you're going to get it, the Velcro on the floor can be attached to the Velcro on the walls. 
And if we've done the whole job as we've described, the whole setup will be quite easy because everything should be sitting relatively square to each other. As Ben is demonstrating now, you get to the corner, lift the pole up, pull it back onto the floor, fit the Velcro into the corners. and continue to work your way around. Again, the whole process only takes a couple of minutes to have a floor in. Great for keeping the insects and uh, critters out. Somewhere for the young kids to crawl around on the floor without being on the ground as well. And the process goes right around the whole tent. Boys will now go around and secure the bottom of the walls with a few pegs. It is essential in high wind conditions that you place these pegs into the ground. They are what will hold the whole tent to the ground. If you have no pegs, the wind can blow the walls in, lift the roof up and that's when things will let go. If these pegs are in, the tent will be very secure in high wind conditions. Ensure that you don't over tension the canvas by a piece of uneven ground and putting the pegs in too far. So basically all we have left to do is a couple of poles on the inside and the fitting of the optional spreader bar kit. Uh, boys are now come in and put in the optional spreader bar kit in the last couple of poles. Uh, roll the canvas flat back and um, secure with the provided attachment points. Just keeps everything neat and tidy and you're not falling over things as you're walking through the door. Ben will now fit the number three pole into the angled wall. This is spigot straight through the hole. Bit of tension as I said before never over tension the canvas. He'll now fit the optional spreader bar. Good for high wind conditions and get the watershed off the roof a little bit more. And you can purchase these spreader bars when you purchase your camper from Market Direct. Again, just light tension, just enough to hold it out. Ben will now put the number five spreader bars in the outside corner behind where the mattress would be. Again, just increases the rigidity of the whole tent. While he's up there, he will uh, pull the privacy screen up. Simply a matter of zipping up the outside, putting the Velcro straps over the top of the bow, and there's our privacy screen ready to use. Thank you Ben. The tent is now in position. A couple of ropes around the storm cover to hold one down. Everything's positioned squarely, ready for you to set up. Have a good time in your Market Direct camper. Thank you. Boys have now removed the annex and the storm cover and in the process of finally doing the final wrap up on packing the tent up. Lee will now come in and uh, demonstrate to us the initial procedure of doing this. First he'll loosen the bows off on both sides, just let them fall back down into position. Uh, the, the one that we've got down into the ground here, into the pocket, reduce that back. And put that back into the receiver. And basically the tent is now ready to be collapsed. Uh, the whole tent will be folded over. Let the air come out of the tent, pull the floor back over the top. We've still got the door in the open position, helps a lot with the uh, air coming out of it. Fold the floor back up and over the top.
tuck everything in as necessary. It's not necessary to pack it up super neat as long as everything's out of the way. It's essential at this part you ensure there is no moisture in the tent whatsoever. This will only lead to uh, mildew and other problems later on. So if you have to pack the tent up wet, please take it home and erect straight away and let the tent dry out before you pack it up for long-term storage. Boys will now put the, the whole Enix, the storm cover and all the walls onto the top of the uh, packed up canvas work. This is the best place to store it, keeps it safe, no, nothing hard is going to fall on in the trailer. Never put anything hard on top of the canvas. They now reposition the tornay cover. Zip it back on into position. Pull the Velcro flap down to completely seal the end at all. If you're in extremely dusty conditions, try and make sure there is no dust or sand that has got into the zip at any stage. It will only damage the zip in the long run. By putting the Velcro cover back down over the zip, this should eliminate all problems driving along the road and make the unit nearly dustproof. Secure all straps on the side of the tornado cover. Fold the stabiliser legs up into position. Very easy to forget these and try and drive off. damage to jockey wheel or stabiliser legs while driving off is not covered under warranty. Please just doing the final adjustment here. Last strap to be done. At this point your market direct camper is ready to be hooked up to your vehicle for a safe journey home. Thank you.